Good morning, this is Dr. McDaniel at GYN Corner. I'm a board certified obstetrician gynecologist in New York City, and I'm bringing to you all things health related for women. Let's see, today's Tuesday, October 1st, so happy October. It's Halloween month. Um, it's a really nice day out today. I don't know how it is the rest of the country, but it's pretty sunshine, a little bit overcast, but pretty sunshiny and um, fairly warm. I think it's in the lower 70s. So hopefully this streak will maybe last to the end of the month. So we'll have a nice warm um, Halloween, Halloween this year. So we won't have to wear a bunch of jackets, but we'll see. Uh, so let's see. For the last couple of days, I've been talking about Asherman syndrome, and I'm going to just do a recap today uh, and conclude it with the, the last bit of uh, the treatment. So Asherman syndrome is considered a rare disorder. It affects less than 1.5% of women who have infertility, but um, it could depending on the population, it can reach much higher percentages. So uh, Ashman syndrome is an, a situation where a woman has scar tissue in her uterus. We call scar tissue adhesive disease or um, the bands of scar tissue are sneaky or adhesions. And those adhesions or, or bands of scar tissue, they suck the walls of the uterus together. So they're not mobile. They don't normally distend. And they occupy a large, um, potentially a large surface area. Wherever the scar tissue occurs, normal functioning uterine lining cannot occur. So Asherman syndrome is an entity where the woman usually has um, light menstrual cycles or she doesn't have menstrual cycles at all. So very light bleeding or no bleeding at all. And we call that oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea. And she still has normal symptoms, so premenstrual symptoms and menstrual cramping or pain and sometimes worse cramping or pain uh, with the what would have been the menstrual cycle than had she actually had the normal menstrual cycle. So increased menstrual cramping with decreased menstrual flow or bleeding and for some women it will occur with infertility so no pregnancy at all or multiple miscarriages so very early frequent miscarriages so five to seven weeks or so is um, common the um, risk factors for Asherman syndrome are usually going to be post-surgical so after surgery the most common surgery being a dilatation and curatage or DNC. DNC after a miscarriage uh, is the most common um, and that's often because um, if someone's doing a DNC after miscarriage sometimes uh, there aren't any symptoms there isn't any bleeding but oftentimes when the Asherman's occurs it's because that lady's been bleeding heavily she has an incomplete or partial miscarriage so there's a lot of bleeding that occurs and then one has to remove or to cure it or to scrape off the attachment of the immature placenta to the wall and if the surgeon is overzealous they can remove or scrape off that li the basal lining or the supportive lining in the uterus and that will allow for scarring um, D DNC or dilatation curatage is the most common surgical procedure. Next would be a, a fibroid removal or what we call a myomectomy because we're plucking out the fibroids and a lot of those fibroids will traverse the entire lining of the uterus. So from underneath the skin of the uterus or what we call subserosal all the way through the body, transmural, and then into the cavity which is submucosal and then ripping away, inadvertently of course, ripping away 
the lining of the uterus that removes that basal layer the scar tissue easily forms and if you have two areas opposed across from each other so they're opposing layers they can stick together and as I said previously if you think of the uterus as a mitten uh, those walls get stuck together and the mitten can't open so first off the diagnosis is made with having an index of suspicion someone's had a surgical procedure and she has light cycles or she doesn't have cycles at all um, or potentially from an infection now here in the states you're not going to get people with tuberculosis or schistomasiasis um, schisto schistomasiasis yeah I always get tripped up on that word too many too many S's uh, but potentially if someone has immigrated here so a woman from another country uh, especially Africa, India, Africa, India, or Asia. Tuberculosis or schistomasiasis are potential um, risk factors for light or absent menstrual cycles. Um, after that, it's going to be infection. So chlamydia, gonorrhea, or more potentially would be a uterine infection, a pus-filled uterine infection. We call that pyometra from PID or even a tubal ovarian abscess. The scar tissue can occur anyway, anywhere from the opening of the cervix all the way to the top of the uterus, what we call the fundus, all the way to each fallopian tubes or the opening of the tubes, which we call the ostea. The evaluation to confirm the diagnosis is made through a sonogram ultrasonography, either the regular ultrasound or some people will use a 3D ultrasound because they can see um, more specifically if that basal layer is disrupted. Uh, also a special x-ray called a hysterosalpingogram and some people will use a special sonogram called a saline infusion sonogram. The regular sonogram and the HSG or the hysterosalpingogram, the x-ray, are the most commonly used duo. And then once those along the history have confirmed your suspicions, there are the physician's suspicions, then she or he will take that patient to the operating room for a hysteroscopy. So hysteroscopy is where a camera is placed in the uterus and then procedures can be done in the uterus looking with that camera. So usually the hysteroscope is going to confirm that's called the gold standard for the diagnosis. Going to confirm that there's bands of scar tissue, snakia, adhesive disease. You may or may not be able to see the opening of the tubes. And then an operative hysteroscopy with usually a laparoscopy which is putting a camera in the belly is done in order to make sure that you don't cut too deeply when you're trying to cut the scar tissue away and then you end up cutting through the wall of the uterus which of course is undesirable. So the hysteroscope is used usually with scissors uh, to cut the scar tissue to separate the walls of the uterus, cut the scar tissue away. Once the scar tissue is opened you can see that because the cavity is open it looks like a mitten and you can see the holes at each of the corners where the fallopian tubes um, are, are um, attached to the uterus and then with the laparoscope you look around the outside of the uterus and see that everything's intact and normal there aren't any um, holes perforations or um, compromise of the integrity of the uterus itself once that's done then the patient is usually given high dose estrogen and cycled with progesterone to give uh, a lot of stimulation to the walls or the lining of the uterus and then you clean it out with progesterone to give her a menstrual cycle. Some people will give birth control pills. We don't really have high dose birth control pills anymore but moderately dosed birth control pills because it's easy you just take a pill every day get the cycle at the end of the pack others will give high dose estrogen and then give her an additional medication the progesterone to clean out the uterus at the end of the surgery a catheter or a balloon catheter is usually placed in the uterus to keep the walls of the uterus away from each other so the balloon blows up and then the walls are separated by the balloon or some people will put a copper IUD in the uterus to keep the wall separated and then that IUD or the catheter is usually removed between two and four weeks sometimes four and six weeks 
uh, additional things can be given to people who have had very severe scarring and the lining of the uterus is still extremely thin or the walls are, have been compromised they're thin so additional supplementation in injected into the uterus is sometimes given so uh, granulocyte stimulating factor or um, stem cells or plasma enriched with platelets so a lot of additional factors can sometimes be given on more of a, a unique individual basis but the general treatment is to cut away break up the adhesive the scar tissue the bands the snaky open the cavity up so you can see both tubes stimulate the lining with estrogen either through a birth control pill as high a dose as possible usually 50 mics or the high dose of estrogen and cleaning out with medication progesterone hormone. That's usually done for anywhere from three to six months. And then the patient's usually monitored by an infertility specialist, um, a, repro in, a repro endocrinologist, uh, in order to monitor the subsequent pregnancy. I hope that's been helpful information on Asherman syndrome. This is Dr. McDaniel at GYN Corner. Uh, please press the like button and please check out the YouTube uh, channel. It's also called GYN Corner. Please subscribe and follow the Facebook and the YouTube channel so you get a heads up on what's being presented, when it's being presented. And please place um, reviews on our podcast platforms. Apple iTunes is the most popular. There's also Google um, Google iPod. Um, I'm going nuts. I'm trying to send messages to the girls at the same time. Google Podcast. Uh, and um, please send um, messages on questions that you'd like to have answered or on topics that you'd like to see presented. I really, really would love to get um, suggestions on topics. Uh, one viewer suggested the topic of uh, what should one do when um, going to yoga classes? Should the yoga pants be worn with or without underwear? I will speak on that. But any topic, as long as it relates to women, girls, mature women, older women, young women, doesn't matter. Anyone with female uh, reproductive organs is fair topic, fair game. Uh, because I want to present information that um, viewers would like to, to know more about or would like to hear about, not just what I think people would like to know about and hear about. Uh, so I hope that's been helpful. Uh, have a great rest of your Tuesday, and I'll be back the next presentation on Facebook Live, the YouTube GYN Corner, and our podcast also called GYN Corner. Thank you. Bye.